Welcome to Mr Chalk's Revision Tips. In this video, we will look at Understanding Genetics and Mendel. So Gregor Mendel studied inheritance of different characteristics in pea plants and flowers. He found out that when he bred red flowered plants with white flowered plants, the offspring would produce red flowers. If he bred these plants with each other, most of the offspring had red flowers, however some had white flowers. So this was because the allele for a red flower is dominant and the allele, so the gene, for a white flower is recessive. So in the 1860s, Mendel's work was not all that widely accepted because nothing was known about chromosomes or genes and it went against the teachings of the church. It was not until the mid 19th century that Gretel Mendel, so an Austrian monk, carried out these important studies into heraldry and passing on characteristics. Uh, we know that characteristics are inherited traits. And Mendel was the first person to succeed in predicting how these traits are transferred from one generation to the next. So the complete exploration requires a careful study of genetics, which is the branch of science that goes and studies heredity in organisms. So Mendel studied the inherited characteristics in pea plants. He found that when he bred red flowered pea plants with white flowered pea plants, they would produce mainly red flowered offspring. So we can see there that we've got the parents which are red and white and their four offspring which are all uh, red. So we now know that because the genes for the red flowers are dominant and the genes for the white flowers are recessive that if you have just the one dominant gene in each of those offspring all four of them would be red because of that reason. So one of Mendel's observations was that the inheritance of each characteristic is determined by units that are passed on to descendants. So the genetic diagram shows all of these possible alleles, right? So like we just talked about. So dominant alleles are shown with capital letters, while as recessive alleles are shown with lowercase letters. And this genetic diagram shows the outcome of Mendel's first cross. So all the offspring have red flowers, even though they are heterozygous, which means that they carry an allele for both the dominant and the recessive genes. So hetero meaning different or two. So three quarters of the offspring have red flowers and a quarter have white flowers. If we went and bred two of these red flowers together. So Mendel's work explained or helped explain the uh, the knowledge of this even before DNA had been discovered. So we can see there, if we look at those genetic crosses, that one out of four of them would end up with two recessive genes that would mean that you had a white flower. So Mendel's work was not accepted by most scientists when he was alive for three main reasons. When he was presented, or when he presented his work to other scientists, he did not communicate it particularly well, so they didn't really understand him. It was not published, or it was only published in a scientific journal that was not well read by people. And he could not explain the science behind why the characteristics were being inherited, because he didn't know what DNA was, and they didn't know what genes were. A genetic diagram shows how chromosomes or alleles may combine in zygotes. So the diagram to the side shows how biological gender is inherited, or in this case, we're going to look at how wrinkly or smooth traits in beans or peas are inherited. So the recessive allele is represented by the lowercase letter, the dominant allele is represented by the uppercase letter, and allele is homozygous for that one particular gene. So someone who has two different alleles will have two different genes. And in this case, the gene combinations that would give us a smooth pig 
would be SS or SW. You can tell that the S is the dominant gene because it's the capital, whereas the wrinkly P is a small W, so it's have to be small W, small W. So we can see from there that we would end up with, if we were crossing, a heterozygous smooth P plant with a wrinkly P plant, we would end up with 50% that would be smooth because it would have the dominant smooth allele, whereas 50% would be wrinkly because they would have two so they would be homozygous because they would have two of the same recessive alleles so modern genetics began with the work of Gregor Mendel however it was uh, continued by a number of people so Rosalind Franklin and uh, Maurice Wilkins used a method called x-ray diffraction to investigate the structure of DNA so DNA was purified and then the fibres were stretched out into a thin glass tube. They were then bombarded with x-rays and how those x-rays were diffracted off it gave some idea that the structure of DNA must have been a double helix. Thanks for watching.